So now we're going to look at the units for magnetic force, taking a look at the current carrying wire equation. So here's the equation we had for this one, where we had that the force was equal to ILB sine theta. To understand the units, we want to make sure that we're very clear on what all these quantities are. So F, again, is force. The I stands for current. The L stands for the length of the wire. B is our B field, or our magnetic field. And theta is our angle. Knowing what all these quantities mean, I can start to take a look at their units. And these are units we should have seen already for these individual quantities. So force has units of newtons. Current has units of amps or amperes. The length is going to be expressed in meters. Our B field is going to be expressed in Tesla. And the angle, well, it might be degrees or radians, but once you take the sine of that angle, there's no units anymore. So that leaves us with a newton is equal to an amp meter Tesla. We can take this equation and rearrange to solve for the Tesla. And what we would see is that a Tesla would be equal to a newton divided by an amp meter. Now, if I remember that this amp could actually be written as a coulomb per second, then equivalently I have this form for the Tesla. And with just a little bit of rearrangement, I see I could also relate that to this form for Tesla. And if you think back, this is the form for Tesla that we had originally derived when we were looking at the magnetic force on a moving charge, where we had the charge and the velocity. So all three units here for Tesla are equivalent to each other, and all three are acceptable forms for a Tesla in units related to other quantities. But probably the most common way you're going to see the Tesla is referred to as a Newton per amp meter. That's just the way we tend to re recognize it and write it out. So that gives you the overview of units for force on a current carrying wire with a little bit more specifically about the Tesla.